is so deep that if you find yourself stuck between these two, one or the other will go after you to expel you from their, their circle. They do not, and it's vicious, and it's called covert because it's all done behind the scenes. Um, they do not want you drawing attention from that person. And it causes such a rage uh, in the opposing, in the, say if it's the mother's partner, there's a rage in the adult child. If it's the adult child's partner, there's a rage in the mother because there's got to be a payoff. I've done this for you, so you'll do this for me. And it's all psychological. It's all done in the psychological area of things. Um, and it's covert. You cannot see this on the surface. But these interactions, be it by body language or facial expressions, are taking place. There's a battle going on all the time. Being in that place. Um, <clears throat> it also continues to say... Instead, they are a source of confusing, confusing, sorry, <laughs> they are a source of confusing and progressive rage. Now, progressive rage, now when I, I hear that, <coughs> when <coughs> on the um, support for men, on that side when if you read all the people on there I would say virtually all of them not to say all but I'd say virtually all of them say that how their partner is angry with them how their partner will totally just dismiss uh, dismiss them give them the silent treatment and the silent treatment is a result of the partner of the man realising that he's got a wrong bond with his mother and it causes an aggravation a withdrawal in the psyche of that person when the partner realises that the person she's supposed to be intimate with has a covert intimate relationship with the mother at a level that's not um supposed to be seen externally by people outside that bond um, when a partner comes in they come into a <laughs> to a place in these people's lives where they see it quite clearly that something's not right you were too close uh, and as I said it will be de defended as uh, part of the family dynamic um, these people aren't aware of um, how they're, dis they're being seen. You have to see it from the outside in. Um, but when you come from the outside and you're looking, looking at it, you're trying to rationalise what is actually wrong here. Um, why do I feel this way? Why, do I, why don't I feel comfortable with my partner and her son? Or why don't I feel comfortable with my partner and his mother it's because the mother's probably, if it be a mother, son, or it can happen father, daughter, um, there's different combinations. But when the mother loses a partner or there's a breakdown in the adult arenas of this family, the mother will turn toward the son for um, certain elements of life that a partner should only give and these people are affected they're affected for the rest of their lives but the people doing it aren't aware of it my last partner's aware of it because we sat down and we spoke about it and tried to work through it um, but it was so ingrained that the whole 
area of resolve was paralyzed, paralyzed to the point where I was in such an oppression, she had no idea. I got out. I had to get out. I could not tell you anything. I didn't want to split up with my partner. But a triangulated relationship at this level and at dip, this depth, where it was more important for the dysfunction and the unresolved than, um, and, and for me to be pushed to the side, as it were, than to just fix the pro They couldn't fix the problem. They didn't want to fix the problem because it gave them a future. You see, there's a self-sabotage element in all of these people, if you get mixed up in them, where they will not risk the future that they have mother to son or son to mother because it's set up that way in the early stages of the um, young man is he's maturing with the mum because the father isn't meeting the mum, mother's emotional needs and then the son goes I can do that and then it builds from there and then you try and undo these these bonds cannot be undone that nobody's challenged them um, nobody's confronted the issue and it just gets left to grow and it grows and then you get involved with one of these people and you're walking into an absolute minefield psychological minefield where you will come out second best over the most slightest slightest thing but mother can do anything mother can call night after night because she's feeling sad because she's feeling lonely and it's okay mum all right mum oh I'm good she's slightly agitated but nothing nothing to what that mother and mesh man will be towards his wife he usually projects his anger what he wants to give to mother to his wife now, this is interesting because um, when I was welcome at my old partner's house before the son became so um, agitated and, and desperate, not by anything I'd done wrong, just psychologically worn out with trying to deal with another man in the house that was showing his mother, mother attention, um, he he would his uh, psychological condition. Her life evolved around his moods and his emotions. It was absolutely pathetic, to say the least. I would not have tolerated it from if one of my sons behaved like that. They would be booted up the ass so hard. They would never. And this woman r ran around and lived around the emotional elements of this boy like he was fucking King Faroo. It was disgusting, atrocious. Now, this isn't the only case. Like, I mean, I'm just, I've, this is one that I've seen. There's another one where, where they've, I've seen grown adult child, well, they're supposed to be children, but they're men, hopping into bed with their mum. Well, I've been there. I'm not frightened to talk about it. You know, this is this is stuff where people are experiencing this and they don't know how to explain it. It's developed over time. And these people, these children, and these mothers, these adult children that are getting partners and these mothers that are getting partners, will allow the child to, or the adult child, to assault the relationships, emotionally and psychologically assault and abuse the relationship, and the son will allow the mother to assault his relationship, and so they'll side together, you'll stand, be standing there and going, are these people aware of what they're doing? And they've got no awareness because they're so involved with each other right it's all disguised under oh this is my son and this is my mother and there's no boundaries it's it's a surrogated relationship 
that I would say um, is so destructive, the oppression and, and consequences of it are almost second to none because if you can't recognize it and identify it, you can spend weeks, months, years trying to justify it in your own mind and they don't care. They're getting on quite fine whether you're there or not. But it is rage, they have hidden rage because that inner child that's been neglected but also been very privileged. You know, it, it's, they've been treated as an object. They have not been... This is the thing and this is what one of the keys. They've been pedestalised and you try and knock someone off their pedestal treated as a human with their own emotions, with their own likes, dislikes. They've been conditioned to be a carbon copy of them. Usually, I would, I would, in my opinion this is, that mothers that do this to their children and when they grow up, that, you know, that that, that, the toys are still there, you know, but the people that do this, the well, the people, their mothers that do this to their children, in my opinion, are narcissistic. They are narcissistic people because they do not see anything but themselves. They know. I'd go as far as saying, and this is just from my theological understanding relative to the Bible and um, I'm not going to say mention characters in the Bible because people play on it, but I would go as far as saying it's almost a dark tri triad um, form of emotional abuse because it is calculated, it is nurtured, it is cultivated, and it is deliberate because it's an attempt to make sure, as I said before, that the security relative to company of the mother and the adult child is secured through the covert emotional uh, bond, emotional incestual bond. So relationship failing, which it will, because that bond will destroy it, they end up with each other anyway, because that's the prophecy of covert emotional incest. Till death do we part, mother to son. Yet underneath it all, because there's a psychological um, repulsion to this within both of them, and that's probably what innately encourages them to try and get out and get a partner, um, the repulsion of this covert emotional incest, because things like these don't come without con consequences, um, this repulsion will draw them to go out and find some company but then when it starts to draw them back they lose the partner that they've gone and found because they've defaulted back to the covert um, um, in emotional incestual relationship which propulses the partner. That's the demonic side of it. That's how dangerous and damaging it is. It just damages everybody. It damages the adult child, it, da it damages the parent and it damages the partners and everybody just less, gets left there psychologically ambushed. We'll continue this in our next session. Um, this is Reverend Dr. Jason W. Morrison, theologist. We'll go on with um, this lady, mother's boy, golden child, covert incest, truth behind a real mother's boy, mother enmeshment. Bye for now.